Hello, hello, and welcome back. We are up to episode number 11. Definitely a world record in single-person podcasting that nobody listens to, I'm sure. Breaking records over here. Um, this week or this episode, I kind of want to just go over some tips and just general um, suggestions I have. You know, I'm four months going into five months into this kind of program or lifestyle change, whatever you want to call it. Call it lifestyle change because I don't want to say like diet or program because that implies kind of like an end. Um, this is just kind of the way I am, I guess, from here on out, or for now anyway, for the foreseeable future. Um, but being five months or four or five months into this, let's, I'm pretty much an expert, right? I'm pretty much the, the greatest, most healthiest person there is um, alive at this point. Something like that. Um, so that gives me authority to start giving tips and recommendations, right? Not really, um, but I did want to kind of just go over a little bit about what I recommend for maybe like a successful weight loss, because I know we're getting into the summer months and a lot of people want to lose weight, and if you're starting now, well, you might have waited a touch too long, but it's never too late to make changes in your, your lifestyle and your eating habits and your activity level um, to get healthier and get fit. So I kind of want to talk about some of those. But really, I mean, the first thing right off the bat is you've got to go into this with the right mindset. I think if you come into this with the mindset, oh, I'm going to diet for a little bit or I'm going to do these exercises for a little bit, I mean, you're setting yourself up immediately for failure. Like I said, you know, diet or an exercise program kind of implies an end point. Like I'm going to do this exercise for a few months, lose some weight, look good for the winter, look good for the summer, look good for bikini months, and then I'm going to go back to the way I was before. Um, me personally, I didn't want that. I wanted to make this a long-term lifestyle change of this is the way it is to make myself healthier in general. I think going forward, it's just kind of like a habit forming thing, a commitment of this is me. This is what I'm doing. So step number one or tip number one is have the right mindset. Cause if you come into it with anything else, I, I feel you're setting yourself up for failure. And number two, really, actually, the, one of the, that's the biggest thing is the mindset. But number two is just as important almost is, is your intake, your nutrition, diet, if you want to call it that. I mean, diet essentially is just what you eat. That's your diet. Um, it might be a bad diet, but that's your diet. And as the saying goes, I don't know who said this, but I know I've heard it before, is that you can't out-exercise a bad diet. So you may start going to the gym, working out, doing all these things. But if you're still eating poorly and having a ton of calories and not eating the right things, you just, you're kind of fighting against yourself at that point. So really what you put into your body, what you're fueling your daily activity with nutrition wise is key. Yes, your mindset, your, your psychological approach to this is key. Number two, what you're putting into your body is also just as important. Um, and when you look at kind of the program as I'm doing it, the way I see that definitely works. It's it's a slow game in the end, but I think it is an effective way to get your weight to a manageable or more comfortable level. Um, is looking at first that calorie budget. I know I talked about calorie budget in a different episode. Um, I didn't name the episode that I probably should have because I don't remember which one it was now. Uh, but calorie budget is to me it's what your your daily allowance of what you can take intake in a day. And I kind of compared it to your finances. You know, you have so much money that you make in a day and you can only spend so much money in a day. Well, you can only eat so much in a day and you can only expend so much in a day. Um, so that's kind of your calorie budget. And you have to set that. And how you set that is you look at first your base metabolic rate. And there's calculator. You type in BMR calculator in, in Google or whatever. Ask Jeeves. Um, what other, whatever search engine you want to use. Um, but yeah, BMR calculator. You put like your age your height, your weight, your sex, boom, it'll spit out um, your, your base metabolic rate. What that, the, what that is is how many calories you burn just existing, you know, just to breathe, your heart pumping, your, your existence. If you just laid in bed all day, didn't move, you still burn calories to exist. Um, it takes energy to stay alive. So that kind of spits out that number, and then that will usually set almost a good bar of, okay, well, I don't want to eat over that because that's – that can be a good calorie budget. Like mine is roughly 1,700. If I stay at 1,700 with my food, then I know I'm breaking even with just staying alive. And any physical activity or exercise I do on top of that will put me into a caloric deficit. If you're trying to lose weight, which I'm sure most people, that's really what their goal is when they get into this, um, you need to put yourself into a caloric deficit. 
not a caloric surplus. Surplus is for people that are trying to uh, bulk up or you know increase their muscle mass, and, and that's a whole different goal, mindset, and person to work at. But if you're just looking at losing weight, you have to get into a caloric deficit. There's just no if, ands, ors, or buts about it. Um, so you've got to get negative on that. So you look at your uh, base metabolic rate and any exercise or activity. So if you're tracking your exercise, like I use my iWatch, um, so I'll get in the exercise program there and then, you know, it knows my height and weight and then it'll kind of spit out how many calories I'm burning with the workout because it's monitoring my heart rate. So I think it's getting me pretty accurate in the ballpark of what I'm burning in a workout. And if you watched the previous episode where I go with the spreadsheets, I'm burning anywhere from 250 to 400 calories in a workout, depending on what I'm doing and depending on how hard I'm going. Um, so yeah, I look at that and say, okay, I've burned 400 calories in a workout. You know, my metabolic rate 1,700. I've burned 2,100 calories in a day. And probably more just based on my, my work. I have, I have a pretty sedentary work where I drive around and I don't have very physically demanding work that I do as a physical therapist. So my activity level there is pretty low. I might be burning a, a couple few hundred calories activity-wise. Not a lot. But I'm burning, yeah, 21, 2200 calories in a day. And then if I eat 1500 calories, well, guess what? I'm in a caloric deficit of six, 700 calories in a day. That's good. I mean, that's all right. As long as what I'm eating is healthy and it, it's not just junk food for 1500 calories. And that's what I've learned in doing this is that when you do it as a caloric budget, you learn what foods are good to eat and will keep you energetic throughout the day. Like a Greek yogurt, um, grilled chickens, you know, different proteins like that, uh, protein shakes that I have, protein bars. Um, you learn what foods will sustain you better than others. Um, so it's not something that I would say you have to track, but it definitely helps. It definitely helps to track what you're eating. That way you can see how much you're putting in your body. Because if I'm burning, say, 21, 2200 calories a day, but I'm eating three, 4,000 calories a day, I'm not helping myself. I, I'm still going to be probably gaining weight and, and probably storing fat because I'm still burning stuff, but I'm not burning enough. And my body still has to do something with what I'm putting in it. So that's why nutrition is really key. And tip number two is watch what you're putting in your body determine your caloric budget and know what you're eating on a daily basis. Um, different food choices, I guess this would go as like tip 2.a or 2 slash a. I don't know how you want to delineate these, but um, is kind of become a nutrition label reader. You know, everything you eat has a nutrition label on it. And I suggest you look at it and, and get an idea of how many calories and what's the serving size. And it's hard at first because it might say four ounces or 30 grams or something. You're like, I don't know what that is. I mean, we did get a food scale as we were going through this. We were trying to estimate all this stuff and calculate. And it was difficult and very hard. But once you get like a little, we got like a mini little food scale. Um, I got that for my birthday this year. That's my birthday present food scale. It's great though. I mean, we both use it and I, it says four ounces. I can put four ounces of chicken on there and be like, that's four ounces of chicken. Boom. I know what that is. It's exact. I've measured it. Um, but then I read the label and I can say that's this many calories, this much protein, this much carbs, this much fat. And I can plug it into my system that I do. I know there's different apps that you can use with it too, which are all, I'm sure fine. You know, if you find an app that really tracks this easily for you, perfectly fine. I'm one that likes numbers and likes to plug and see myself. So that's why I do it that way. But I've become a, a nutrition label reader, and I think that's it's a tip I would give you when you're looking, going through the aisles of the Walmart or wherever you grocery shop, and you start looking at the foods you're eating. Pick them up and look at the label, and you might be surprised. Even some things that are labeled as healthy, or you think your, per, your perception of it is it's healthy, you pull it off and you look at it, you're like, oh, good grief, this is like high in fats or something. I've even seen some foods like I look at it go, oh, that looks pretty good. And it says, you know, high protein. So let's take a look. And I look at it and it's like 60 grams of, you know, carbs and a lot of it's just sugars. And, you know, maybe it might have 20 grams of protein, but then they've just loaded it up with sugar to try to get the flavor right. And that's like, okay, well, I'm not going to get that then. So you kind of have to learn how to read labels. And I'm not going to get into that with this whole podcast, but kind of learn how to read those and see what you're putting in your body and then you might start to make some different food choices just as you see those things and you can plan meals ahead i mean i would recommend that too i guess this would be tip two slash b um, plan meals ahead if you know you're going to be going out or say hey we're going to be i'm going to this wedding or we're going to this birthday party 
you can kind of pre-plan that. Say, oh, we're doing this birthday party at this restaurant or meeting for somebody's whatever it is, you know, anniversary here or, you know, look at the menu in, in advance and kind of roughly know, say, oh, this, you know, I like, this looks like a good option, this burger that I like. And then kind of see if you, if they have nutrition information, great. If not, you can, you still have to kind of figure out what it is burger-wise or whatever menu item that you're choosing to say, oh, yeah, that's this many calories, this much, okay, I, I see where I'm at. And then you can kind of plan the rest of your meals today. Say, hey, I know we're going to go out for our anniversary dinner here. I'm, I'm going to have this for breakfast, this for lunch, so that way I know I'm still keeping in the ballpark of where I need to be for the day. So there is a little bit of meal planning that goes with it. So nutrition is key. That's why I'm spending a lot of time on nutrition because, my gosh, that is super important. When it comes to weight loss and getting healthy, what you're putting in your body is key. Um, and tip three, or I guess the last one, we're only doing, I guess, a couple. So psychological, what you're putting in and what you're putting out, that's exercise. Your, your physical activity, that's the last thing. Um, and my recommendation for that or my tip for exercise or activity is resistance training, weight training, not cardio. Maybe that's a hot take. I don't know. Not that cardio is bad. Cardio is fine. You know, doing some cardiovascular exercise to increase your heart rate is good because it does burn calories. But I think resistance training is better. Now, I don't. There may be some research that backs me on this. Maybe not. Maybe history will prove me right. Maybe it'll prove me wrong. But for right now, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, resistance training, I think, is activity-wise, the other big key to good weight loss and getting healthy. Now, in your resistance training, it's not like you're going to start working out today and then three months from now you're going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I hear a lot of people, oh, I don't want to be like all oh, big muscly. If you just start working out three to five days a week, some moderate to heavy resistance training, you are not going to build muscle mass like that that quickly. What will happen, though, is you will, you know, as you're working out doing resistance training, you will improve your strength. And if you're increasing protein intake with your nutri nutrition, you will increase your muscle mass in general, but it's not going to be that perception of muscle bound bodybuilder look. But in the process of doing that, you are cardiovascular, your heart's pumping more, you're burning more calories to do those um, exercises. And then your body is building muscle mass. And then that protein in muscle tissue becomes like a caloric incinerator where it will you will just burn more calories i mean you hear of bodybuilders that lift weights now this is what they do for a living though but they'll have like a six thousand calorie um a day diet that they're that they're on because they're working out and they're burning all that but they need that their, their muscles need that their body needs that to build that that muscle tissue um, so it just burns calories like no other. I, I feel like building some muscle mass and, and increasing that will help burn calories immensely. Now, if you listen to the last one, like I said, I'm not sharing before and after photos yet, but I've done this for four or five, going on five months. And I've been working out five days a week pretty regularly. I may have missed a couple here and there. I think there might have been a week where I've done maybe three or four days a week. But I'm very consistent with five to six days a week of resistance training. And if you've seen the spreadsheet, you can see all the exercises I do and you can see all the reps and sets and weights that I do. It's nothing too strenuous or over over crazy. You know, it's it's pretty basic. But if I, I've already seen physiologically the change in my body composition from kind of going soft and getting thick to I feel much more this isn't the right word maybe but firm tight toit feel toit i don't know the right word for it more tone um I, I can see the muscle tissue on me that has increased and that the fat content has decreased i can definitely see how my body re has recompositioned itself with this whole change i'm not prepared to show it to anybody yet but if you have seen me or know me personally Hopefully you've maybe have seen that change too. I know other people have made comments to me that they have seen that. So I look in the mirror and I feel like I see it. I'm not like some bodybuilder dude who has just muscles on top of muscles um, in, in the workouts that I do. But I feel like I've increased my muscle mass and I feel like it. I've just, my body's become so much more efficient in burning calories and I burn a lot of calories in what I do. So that's why I, th I really think strength training or resistance training is key. I guess going off of that, so this would be like tip 3B. When you're working out, 
I would start, if you're just starting out, which a lot of people when they get into this, they are just starting out. Keep it light, light weights, control the weights, control the reps, slow and steady. Um, and just start with big muscle groups, just big compound movements. You don't have to get into like isolating your biceps or anything like that, but you know, like just a bench press, a squat, um, a lunge, an overhead press. Yeah, some arm curls, um, some overhead arm presses for like triceps or pull downs for triceps. Target big muscle groups, um, light extra or light weights, controlled movements, um, and do it until your muscles you feel like you can't do them anymore. And then if you want to track it, you can kind of keep keep an eye on how much weight and how much reps you're able to do just to kind of track your progress. But that would be my recommendation for starting out. Um, and after, you know, once some workouts, after a few weeks of doing it, yeah, look in the mirror, see what you see. After a workout, you might look and go, okay, I'm starting to see, I'm starting to see some changes here. I think I might look good doing this. I might keep on it. It does kind of help motivate. I know for me, I'm not one that like sits and stares at myself in the mirror. You see it at the gym sometimes in the locker room. Dudes will start posing in front of the mirror, doing all their different like bodybuilder poses, and I kind of just shake my head like, oh, okay. I get it. I mean, I found myself a couple times I don't pose in front of the mirror because I feel like that's weird, but I'll stand in front of the mirror and look and be like, okay, I do see, I do see changes. I, and it does kind of motivate you in a way to say, yeah, I actually can see some tone to the biceps or I can actually see a tricep there. Hey, that looks pretty good. It motivates you to keep going. So, and really the big thing when it comes to resistance training, I guess this would be tip three B then would be stay consistent. Keep pushing it. Um, it's one of those things that if you're going to help build strength and build muscle mass, you've got to stay on it. You've got to be training your muscle. And ideally you want to train all your muscle groups twice a week. Um, and that's kind of how I've set my program up. I have a a three-day program that I repeat twice. So uh, most weeks, hopefully I'm in the gym six days a week, getting all my major muscle groups that I'm working on twice a week. Um, that way it gives them adequate rest time in between. And then I have a day of rest so that everything gets, you know, everything gets worked out twice a week and it has rest in between. So they've got time to recover too. You definitely got to have time to recover. Um, and I guess the other, this would be three C or maybe this might even be tip number four is sleep. Um, and I'm not saying like you need to sleep all the time, but you do have to be able to get adequate sleep in the evening, six to eight hours of sleep a night. When it comes to getting healthy, burning calories, say so that's the time of day when you are when you rest, like some of them are even suggesting, like when you get done with your exercises, have like some protein, protein shake or something after the fact, and then wind down and go to bed within a couple hours. Because while you're sleeping, your body's going to be doing a lot of work on fixing all that. It's going to be using all that to help, say, build build some muscle tissue back. Um, your body does a lot of work while you're sleeping. So that's you've got to be able to get that sleep so that your body has that kind of recovery time and is able to do all that. Now, that may be part of muscle recovery and exercise or... Sorry if you just heard something. I just smacked my mic by accident. Um... But yeah, sleep. Sleep is key. So six to eight hours of sleep in the evenings is key. That could be its own tip. Um, you know, now I'm not saying like sleep. Oh, if a little sleep is good, then, you know, sleeping 20 hours a day would be great. No, um, just adequate six to eight hours of sleep. Solid is huge. So big things. Mindset. Come into this with the right mindset if you're going to do something like this. Know your nutrition, know what you're putting in your body, know you're going to have to make big changes and it's going to be awkward and it's going to suck at first because you're not going to be eating the foods that you're used to eating. Um, and really pay attention to what you're eating. Calculate that caloric budget of how much you can eat in a day and really watch that, track it at first because it, when you start estimating, a lot of people have told me this when I'm estimating how much, at first I would just estimate how many calories I'd eat in a day. And I thought I was doing good until I actually tracked it. Then I was like, wow, I'm like really undershooting what I'm actually eating. You know, I, I figured I was only eating like 2,000 calories in a day and I was eating like 3,500. So you got to track it at first just so you know. Now, once you get the feel of it and you start learning what foods are what, you don't need to track it as much. I track it pretty hardcore because it helps me. Um, and then exercise, resistance training, start light, control your weights, take your time with it, stay consistent with it. Really, you do those things plus getting some good rest, good night's sleep, man, you're on your way to a healthier, better you, and you will feel better, and I think you'll look better. Not that you look bad now. You look great. You know what? You do. You look great. But we could always look better. <laughs> At least that's what I tell myself. I could look better. 
people's like, oh, you're already skinny. You look fine. Oh, I could look better, though, and I know I can, and I want to. So that's kind of been some tips or tricks from the expert here who's done this for four or five months. I'm Like I said, I'm like the healthiest, greatest person ever at this, so you should take my word for it. And if you believe that, well, I got some other things I could probably sell you. Other than that, I appreciate you listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>